Well, hey guys, welcome back to the Pet Parenting Reset. If you're new here, my name is Jessica. I'm a pet parent coach and positive reinforcement dog trainer. And on this channel, we talk about all things dog training, dog behavior, cat behavior, dog and cat nutrition and enrichment, all the things to make sure your cat is living their happiest, healthiest life. So if that sounds like something you're into, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Today, we're gonna be talking about itchy paws on dogs. This is a super, super hot topic. And I know I've done similar videos to this in the past, but I'm kind of doing a different flow, a different feel to this video because I'm just going to say the like, here is my checklist of things I want to have you look into when, like if somebody comes to me and says, my dog is just constantly looking at their paws. These are my thoughts. This is my thought process, how I want you to go through. So let's get started. Okay, first and foremost, when your dog's paws are itchy, is this something that happens seasonally? Is this something that just started happening and is like progressively getting worse, like they can't stop? Is this something that has been going on for a long time? I wanna know these things. Because if these are seasonal allergies, then we can address them differently. Now, a lot of what I'm going to say in this video is going to be helpful and beneficial to those pets that are just having seasonal allergies as well. I don't really love the like give your dog a Zyrtec though sometimes we do need to resort to that especially if our dog's quality of life is really suffering. But here's what I'm thinking. First and foremost if your dog has itchy paws my mind goes to okay there's a problem in the gut and or we have some vaccinosis going on. Now, if you've never heard the term vaccinosis, make sure to stick around. I'm gonna talk about that in just a minute. Let's first start with the gut. So what is your dog eating? I would prefer for your dog to be on a species appropriate, fresh food, high moisture diet. Raw is my preferred, but I know not everybody can get there. So even if we can't get to a raw diet, I'm still looking for a moisture rich, uh, diet. So can we get to, you know, home cooked um, that is balanced species appropriate? Can we get to even a, a freeze dried food that we rehydrate? Um, so a freeze dried food is going to be more shelf stable to, in my mind, not as good as a raw diet, but still pretty good um, as long as we rehydrate it. So we're adding that moisture back into the diet, but still this freeze dried food should be um, it freeze dried raw is what we're looking for. So we are still getting these species appropriate foods. So our dogs are carnivores. So the majority of their nutrient intake should be from animal based products, meat, organ meat, bone, fur, feathers. Those are what we are primarily looking to feed our dogs. So that is what a freeze dried food should be as well. It should be a freeze dried raw food with primarily meat, animal based ingredients. Um, rehydrate it because we want to keep moisture high, right? We, our dogs, they get the prime, they primarily get their moisture from the foods they eat. Now, is it, it's worse with our cats. Yes, cats rarely drink water. Dogs will drink water. Some dogs are different, of course. All dogs are individuals, all pets, all cats, all, everyone is an individual. So we can't really like pigeonhole any any dog into, well, this is how they're going to act. That's not necessarily true, but the majority of their water intake, their moisture intake is going to be from their diet. So we want to make sure they're eating a, a fresh food, moisture rich, species appropriate diet. Um, this alone can help a lot of dogs with their itching issues because itching is another sign of inflammation. Inflammation in the body comes from all sorts of things, um, but we we want to look at the food that we're getting because a lot of foods we eat are inflammatory. If your dog is eating a high carbohydrate diet, um, like a dry kibble, we fully expect inflammation in the body to be high. If they're not getting a lot of moisture, we, we expect inflammation to be high. If there are a lot of chemicals in the environment, if there are a lot of toxins in the environment, um, we expect inflammation in the body to be high. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. So feeding a species appropriate fresh food balanced diet up, like it, it doesn't, for me, almost 
every dog there are going to be some exceptions i would love to see them on a balanced raw food diet and balance doesn't it, it it can be balanced every meal balanced or it could be balanced over time so i'm not going to get into that in this video but understand that, that we do need to have some balance in what our dogs are eating um so we don't experience nutritional deficiencies which is a whole nother topic so whether your dog is is having like this ongoing issue with itchiness or even seasonal allergies seasonal allergies can sometimes be mitigated by improving the food we're eating because we are giving our body a fighting chance we're allowing our body to rest in one area so that they can perform better in another area so if your dog is eating a dry food kibble diet they are very highly inflamed because of that to begin with then the body the immune system doesn't have a whole lot of additional resources to be attacking seasonal environmental allergies i hope that makes sense um i'm, I'm trying to kind of break it down it is basic as i can so that we can kind of move forward in the video now so that's going to be the number one thing that i recommend for just about any dog again there are going to be some exceptions here very, very few. The, the, the dogs that I would have exceptions with, I, I would say let's do a home cooked um, balanced diet versus a raw. So either way, we wanna switch to fresh foods. Now, the second thing I wanna talk about is if this is something that has recently started happening with your dog, while yes, it could be seasonal allergy related, it could also be pain related. Your dog could be having pain um, in their joints or for some other reason so we want to get into our veterinarian's office to have this checked out to make sure this isn't a pain related issue i did want to make sure i put that in this video because it definitely is a possibility and i don't want people to watch this video not even thinking oh i should be double checking my veterinarian you absolutely should be checking with your veterinarian to see if this is a pain related issue before moving forward with anything else um that said if it is environmental um then of course feeding a better diet is potentially going to help because it's going to allow your dogs uh, immune system additional resources they're gonna we're gonna remove resources from fighting all of the inflammation from the not so good food we're feeding and reall being able to reallocate them um, in more appropriate ways to you know seasonal defenses that said we can help our dog with seasonal allergies by making sure that we are not walking them in areas that have recently been sprayed with chemicals um, we can make sure that when we do get home when they do walk back in the door from any outing whatsoever that we are uh, cleaning their feet really well we can also do apple cider vinegar um, soaks on their feet so when they once twice depending on how itchy your dog's paws are you can do this multiple times a day but at least once a day we want to take um, a, a small basin depending on the size of your dog you could even do this in the tub if you need to fill it with water and then add enough apple cider vinegar to where it kind of looks like a diluted tea color and then um, so like you know when you're making iced tea that color the color of iced tea a diluted iced tea is what it should look like so add some apple cider vinegar to the water and let your dog's feet soak in that for a while a good 10-15 minutes is going to be perfect it's really going to help now another thing you can do um i i highly recommend the apple cider vinegar uh, soaks but uh, in between you can also use coconut oil on their paw pads to help ease uh, especially any uh, dryness that may be going on and it's also really soothing it's also naturally antibacterial antifungal um, antimicrobial so we are uh, covering a lot of bases with by using um, coconut oil on their paws and paw pads so okay now let's talk a little bit about that v word that i said at the beginning vaccinosis so one of the top top um, side effects of over vaccination is itchiness and itchy skin so 
we I am not anti vaccination let me just put that out there in case you haven't seen any of my other videos um, I'm not an anti vaxxer I think that um, certain vaccines are important and we should absolutely follow a modified vaccine schedule to make sure that our pets are producing appropriate immune responses to some of the nastiest things out there like rabies um, parvo distemper but there is a point where once our dog produces that immune response that if we continue to vaccinate we are we're overloading the body with unnecessary um, unnecessary chemicals um, heavy metals that are in vaccines lots of things that are causing our pets to not feel very well at all um, there are vaccines that are known to cause cancers it's it's not a good thing and there is a very easy way to know if your pet has had enough vaccine to produce an immune response and that is called a titer test t-i-t-e-r this is a simple blood test that you can either have your veterinarian send off or you can um, have your veterinarian do the blood draw and send it off yourself through a service like homeopath um, and they will send it to Kansas State University they will measure the antibodies in that blood sample to let you know if there is an immune response to certain viruses like rabies and once you have that you're good because your pet's body has realized that that is a threat produced an immune response to it sufficiently to be able to fight it if they are ever uh, if they ever encounter it and you are good to go you don't need to continue to vaccinate especially when there are such horrible 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 risks of over vaccination vaccinosis is a term that covers a lot of different side effects of over vaccination itching is one and, and ear problems red itchy ears and just all over body itching are some of the most common side effects of over vaccination so that's another thing that i want you to be aware of also um, chemical flea and tick medications there are wonderful wonderful natural alternatives and again every dog in every situation is different so i don't want to give you that in this video i have talked about it many many times in the past but understand that these um, fipronil and isoxazoline based products which are the majority of the products out there first of all they don't repel fleas and ticks what happens is if a flea or a tick bites your pet they then get the neurotoxin that is in your pet's blood that your pet is not immune to by the way and it kills them so um it, they're not repellents so first off understand that but they also have really nasty side effects and itching is one of them so i would highly recommend looking into natural alternatives for flea and tick medications as well so that's kind of an overview of where my mind goes and what I'm thinking we need to make adjustments in a dog's life. Now, okay, there's one more thing I wanted to mention and that's um, environmental toxins. So we want to remove um, natural fragrances, chemical air fresheners, if you have any um, like scented plug-ins, scented candles, uh, we wanna remove chemical cleaners. I have some really, I have a really great, I have a couple really great videos on YouTube about creating and making your own um, pet safe chemical free cleaners that work. I personally have used them for many years in my home. They really, really work. And um, I'm not adding a chemical, a toxin load in my home for my pet. Uh, so there's, there's that as well. We wanna clean up our home environment for our pet as best we can. And also not putting these chemical on our lawn either so if you live in a home if you have your own yard you want to keep that chemical free for your pet as well that includes everything from roundup which is um, glyphosate any glyphosate um, weed killers we also we just don't want to add a bunch of like you know chemicals to kill pests there are natural alternatives for all of this so keeping the environment clean the toxins low in your dog's environment that is also going to be really really key for keeping your pet health healthy and happy so those are all of the things I know I went over a lot but that's where my mind goes when somebody comes to me and says their dog's paws are itchy so with that I'm gonna go ahead and end this video I hope it was helpful um, I did go over a lot you might want to bookmark this video go over it a few times and take notes 
If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. Reach out to me on the socials. If you want some help specifically with your pet, I offer those services as well. You can check my link tree to get to my website, jessicalfisher.com, and there's a services tab there. Um, I do offer those services as well. So I hope this video, again, I hope it was helpful. If you're not already part of the Patreon family, make sure you join. If you're not already subscribed, I hope you subscribe to the channel. It's absolutely free. Um, and the podcast. If you're not already listening to the podcast, make sure you check that out anywhere you get podcasts. With that, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Give your pets some extra love from me. Until next time. Bye, guys. Bye.